I'm the last speaker for today. Thank you very much for coming. You know, I just realized today's Saturday. You guys could have gone shopping or something, but no, you guys chose to come here in TEDx. So please give a big round of applause for yourself. Thank you very much. <laughs> so um, my name is Azim Hulaimi. I'm a visual effects artist. Uh, if you don't know what exactly is that, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you something cool stuff. You want to see? Of course you do. Uh, okay. Uh, when I was a kid, I really liked to watch movies. It's uh, one of my favorite things to, to do with my brother. It's like a brotherly love tradition. We always watch new movies. And one of the movies that he showed me when I was small was Star Wars. And I was like, Everybody likes Star Wars, right? So in the 1970s. So I like, I mean, the storyline and the music was good, but what captured me the most was the visual effects. Even though it was 70s, it was, I was like this, who are you? I was like, oh my God, I want to do that. So my subconscious dream, I wanted my name to be in that movie. I don't care. I want directed by Azim or produced by Azim or acted by Azim or, or something. I, want, I just want my name to be in that. That was my subconscious dream. I didn't, I didn't know whether I would work towards that, but that was like my uh, hidden dream. So uh, last few years, I joined a company called Rhythm and Hue Studios in KL. There's a KL branch here a few years ago. Um, so, okay, uh, this, is, this is the logo. So Rhythm and Hughes has been around for 25 years. Uh, they have done a lot of movies. Um, years, uh, but uh, I mean, oh, sorry. Uh, okay, okay, you can see th this, these are the movies that uh, KL branch was involved. Uh, there's a lot of branches. It's not just KL. Uh, the headquarters is in LA, uh, but they have in Mumbai, Hyderabad, Vancouver, Taiwan, and us. So... When I joined this company, I was, I was very happy. I didn't have to go to overseas. Overseas came to me. So I was like, yes. So these are the movies that we worked on. Uh, maybe you see Percy Jackson, Django, Yogi Bear, uh, Snow White and the Houseman, nominated for Best Visual Effects as, as well. But there was one movie, one movie that I was surprised that it, it got a lot of buzz, and that is Ah, Life of Pi. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Now... Woo! Yeah, it was very good. Now, Life of Pi, everybody know. Uh, did you watch it? Yeah, watch it right. In IMAX or not? Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, you should watch in IMAX because it was meant to watch in IMAX. They shoot with a 3D camera. So, this production was about three years in the making, but we, KL Branch, only worked on six months, even though six months is actually quite long. So, this is the production the global production Life of Pi. You can see I, I wrote 960 shots in the movie, but Rhythm and Hughes only worked 446. Can you see the yellow highlighted one? 7% KL. Even though seven is actually quite a lot. So can you imagine Los Angeles 53%? It's like much more. So 7%, but it's a great 7%. So I, I, I really like it. <laughs> so, okay, I'm going to show you behind the scenes of the video roughly... Uh, everything that uh, we've done, I mean, globally, so enjoy, yeah? the longest I've ever been on a production. And uh, it started in August of 20, 2009 when uh, Ang came over and he, he asked uh, whether a digital character looked better or worse in stereo. And we all kind of said, uh, we don't know. So why don't we give it a shot? The, you know, the challenges for us were how to, how to portray an ocean that's um, as much a character as possible. And you know, this is the first film in a while that's really right there in the ocean non-stop for over three-fifths of the running time so we had to uh we had to find a way to deal with the oceans and then the the animals um even we, we did even though we did use uh some practical tigers uh, there was no way we were putting um even a trained tiger on the life raft with uh, the actual actor um even even on the tank uh putting him on a 26-foot boat would have uh, uh, never flown with the insurance adjusters 
so we had to make a digital tiger and make sure that it looked as real as the uh, back, to, back to back with the real thing. The whale breach, it, ha it has a slightly over cranked feel, a slight slow motion feel. Uh, and again, to, to get that weight into, the, into that animal is, is tricky and I think it works well. You know, for me, it was just really important that we could feel that an animal weighing tons of tons and that he was powerful enough to, to breach out of the water uh, to that height just to, to feed the drama and, and to make it spectacular. We just, we just pushed the height of, of, the, of the jump and, uh, and, and the whale comes out of the water completely and it, and it looks cool. Okay, departments. Uh, I'm just going to roughly tell you what the departments involved during this production. So we have five. Uh, one of them is animation, match move, FX, BG prep, and compositing. Animation is usually mostly involved with the tiger, Richard Parker, and orang utan, uh, hyenas, and zebras. So they are the ones, the animation department is the ones who uh, animate all the 3D models and stuff, they have to concentrate and make sure they study all the movements. So that's what they're concentrate on. Now, match move. I feel like match move, they don't get enough credit. It's actually very important as well. What they do, it's very simple, it's very straightforward. Um, if let's say you want to put Richard Parker in the boat, the 3D tiger, how do you do it? Because there's no 3D space. I mean, uh, uh, that's why the match move, they have to get all the set data from the, the ones they shoot and then they put all the data in the 3D software so that they can calculate the orientation, the position and the scaling exactly like the footage. Then you only then you can put the tiger in the boat. If the match move, if they didn't do anything, then the tiger will look like it's floating. It's not really on the boat. It's like they can't tell whether the tiger is here or here or here. So that's why it's very important. FX department. FX department mostly uh, they work with CG Ocean. Uh, as you can see, all the ocean is computer generated. And also the tiger's fur. The tiger's fur, you know how many hairs they have? Uh, it's 10 million hairs. 10 million hairs on that fur. So what they do is um, if, let's say, the Richard Parker is moving this way, they, they have to animate the fur going that way, going this way. If we go here, you have to go there here. Uh, so they have to do that one by one. You know how long they render the tiger with the fur? I think it was 30 hours per frame. 30 hours. That's like going potixen, makan ikan bakar, come back, so I haven't finished yet. Uh, then uh, we have BG prep. Now, BG prep is my department. BG prep means background preparation. Now, what me and my other ex colleagues do, we work on the footage, we uh, do we remove the actors on the wires, or we remove the tracking markers, we remove anything that's uh, unwanted things that we don't want to see, we remove it. And also rotoscoping, which I will show you what it's all about. Okay, rotoscoping. Rotoscoping is the most basic thing in post-production. It's like, you have to do this. Everyone have to know this, okay? It's, it's like Photoshop. If you play with Photoshop masking, then you know what I'm talking about. So this is an example. This is called original plate, okay? Now what we do with the compositing software, we roto, can you see the line at the edge of the boat? Okay, we do one trace line like that first. And then we do it one round of the actor. Well, this is not what, how I usually do it, but just for example, we do like this. Then after we do this, then we take it. We don't want the blue background, so it looks like this, black. This is what we want. So if we remove the lines, then you can see it's like this. Now, after I finish this one, then we're going to give to the compositors where they will take what we wrote out, uh, short form, roto, then we give, then they can take it and replace with any background they want, skies, uh, ocean, anything. So in this case, I replace with a gray background. So this is roughly how it looks like. This is only one frame. In the shots, it's like 500 frames or 1,000 frames. And not just that, you have to, we have to do twice because stereoscopic work, 3D, right? Uh, so a lot of work. <laughs> So I'm going to show you uh, this before and after, okay? Like, just like what I explained with rotoscoping, after we rotoscope, this is the original in a water tank. After, looks like that. The compositors will add all the oceans and the thunder and the rain, so it looks like, with the color corrected uh, stuff as well. Another, uh, see, pie is standing like that. There's actually, 
Ah, oh, lightning. He wants to get electrocuted. Okay, now I'm going to test your eyes. See if you can differentiate which one is real and which one is CG, computer generated. Is this real? Real or not? No? Of course not. <laughs> How can you ask? Uh, you smile? Uh, get a camera? Uh, of course you can't, right? Okay, so this is computer generated. What about this one? Real or not real? Real. Real? Serious? No, no, no. This is CG as well. If it's real, can you, what happened to the hand later on? Oh, yo, of course not real. But I was surprised. I thought it was real also, but it's actually not real. It's CG. This one, real. Of course it's real. I, I worked on this. Uh, I had to, it was standing behind a blue background, so I have to remove it. Uh, next. This one. It's real? No, it's not real. <laughs> this one is CG. Composite regenerated. Can you see the eyes? Looks very real, right? When they jump in the ocean, is it real or not real? Real. Of course it's real. No, <laughs> it's real because, can you see the whiskers of the tiger? I had to roto one by one. Because the back there is a blue background, so the compositors need the whiskers. If, if, I, if they don't roto, it will look, the whiskers look like blue. Blue colored whiskers. So I have to roto, then they will color correct it. So that's one of my work. Then next, real or not? Who say real? <laughs> no, it's not real. It's CG. <laughs> I mean, you, you want to ask the tiger, ah, come sit on my lap. Ah. You, you pretend you sleep. No, of course not, right? You want to know, you want to see what it actually is? Ah, uh, blue stuffy cute pillow. <laughs> I'm not making this up. This is real. Can you see the, can you see the marker there? Uh, that's supposed to be the tiger's eyes to, for the actor to see. Uh, can you see the comparison or not? Very real, right? <laughs> Don't play play, eh? Okay. <laughs> okay, the next one. Okay, this is a, a picture of all of us. This is all the KL people who were on the left of pie. We watched it with uh, Don Mahade and the wife as well. Surprisingly, they didn't sleep. It was two, and a, two hours over, but, but in, at the end, they were like, very good job. Very good. Thank you. Malaysia <laughs> boleh. So, it's, it's very good. So, we were honored because at least we get recognized. This is the time when we all uh, learned that we won Best Visual Effects, Academy Award for Best Visual Effects of Life of Pi. This was our office. Uh, that's me and some other of my friends as well. So we were very excited. We won Academy Award. So this was very good. Thank you. Okay. Um, the challenges that we face in this Life of Pi production is very, very enormous because First of all, stereoscopic. Stereoscopic means they shoot with a 3D camera, which means they have two lenses. And when two lenses, it means it's not one set of images. It's two set, left eye, right eye. So it means we have to do double work, which is quite a lot. And then we had long frame range. It's like 500, 800, 1,000 frames, like rotoscoping and all that is, is quite a lot. And then because of long frame range, they had to, we had to delegate with other people. It's not. It's not one one man show. You need to share with at least five or six people to do to finish all of that. And of course, tight deadline. I mean, it's no stranger. Everyone have to meet their deadline, so everything is quite pressure. So, how do we execute all this and finish on time? You know, it's, it's quite a lot. So, one of the most important key elements that I feel that we uh, became more efficient and consistent is not skill. It's actually uh, like. Christian say very cliche is positive attitude and mindset. We were very positive while we're doing work. I, I've never seen my colleagues uh, very positive. It's like when I was doing work, uh, I was I was you know having trouble doing this doing that. Then then uh, one of my friends say, Azim, you can do it. You can do it. You can you you can you can. Then, then oh you don't know. I teach you. I teach you. So I, I've never met a coworker who's very very. Uh, passionate about teaching me stuff. I only asked one thing, and he, he teach me everything. So, so I, I really love, love that enthusiasm. And because of that, it's like it helped me and other colleagues uh, cope better with stress by resolving the, focusing on resolving issues, and you know, rather than dwelling on frustrations. I, mean, <laughs> I can't do all that, all that stuff. Uh, so now, I want to tell you, how do you want to be positive? 
it's very it's very hard to struggle with positivity, right? So how do you want to become positive, maintain it, and be a good person? Not not just in working life, uh, not just in working life, you know, in life. What what is the thing that made you who you are today? What is it? Parents, your parents, my parents. Parents are the one who gave you your foundation of life. They are the ones who tell you what's right, what's wrong. Don't steal. Don't eat too much. You get fat. All the all these things is very important things because later on when you I'm talking for the uh, to the youth people huh? because when you later go to the university or colleges you'll be moving away from your parents already you'll be out in the real world alone then how you be like um, how to say it's like that is where the true challenge comes in you know because how do you carry yourself how do you converse with other people with different opinions different cultural background it's, it's a personal personal struggle and you want to make your parents proud right uh, so always remember what your parents taught you about life uh, as long as you remember you'll be okay second one is who do you hang out with other than your parents your friends you have to choose the right friends as well i mean i mean you need friends who make sure that you uh, really follow um how to say uh, stick by you through thick and thin you know you don't you don't want friends who have a lot of negativity and all this stuff uh, who drains your energy. You want people who really, really uh, respect you and, and care for you. So as long as you have good parents and good friends, I promise you, all of you will be okay for sure in life. Okay? Deal? Okay. Thank you. Now, uh, KL Branch, uh, Rhythm and Hughes is already closed because of bankruptcy. It happened in LA, so it affected us. So now that we've closed, uh, everyone is unemployed, including myself. But I feel that, well, maybe I want to try something new. I want to, uh, maybe I want to try to open a company. So this is my company, Mirror Digital. It's, <laughs> it's, first of all, it's not a girlfriend's name, huh? not my ex or whatever. Okay. No, it's not Amira or what. Um, it actually means, uh, it actually means uh, in Japanese, it means mirror. So, mirror digital. So, hopefully, you know, I can, whatever I, that I learned in Rhythm Hughes, even though I was only two years, uh, KL Branch is four years, but hopefully that I can, uh, how to say, build up the visual effects industry in Malaysia and also recreate the same happy, happy environment. So, I hope for that. So, next is uh, Seven Sun. This is the one, um, our last movie before we close down. So hopefully next year you can support and watch, okay? Enjoy. Signs of evil are everywhere. And now we have this beast. I thought you might protect us. Did you miss me? divided between light and darkness. You are the seventh son of the seventh son. What exactly do we do? Since the beginning of time, we have protected mankind. Teach me. You think humanity is good? There is evil inside every one of them. They use you. And they will throw you to the fire. Why choose them? If you see a witch, kill it. We're not all evil, you know is your most important test. Use everything I taught you.
is disgusting. What does that kill? Cowardice. <laughs> Another time. Okay, this is just to show, this is just to show you my name on the Life of Pi with my other friends. I just want to show you that. I just want to show you all of you Malaysians that Malaysia got talent. Go hot. You sure got one. If I can do this, a normal guy like me in Malaysia, you don't know who I am. I'm not a celebrity. But if I can do that, all of you surely can. 100%. Okay? Don't give up on your dreams yet. Okay? So lastly, I want to say that, you know, this year's TEDx Youth is about innovation from ideas to impact. So whatever ideas that I give you or the other presenters give you today, we give to you, you guys make the impact. Okay? Boleh? Boleh!